so now on to step six um, on this one we're going to actually not just find the pointer but we're going to want to read that directly um, with 64 of it it takes a little bit more we're going to go ahead and do this in Lua um, this will be our first Lua tutorial it shouldn't be too complicated um, so we want to look up some things basically in the Cheetah Engine wiki I'm doing some uploads in the background so I've got everything loaded up already um, we want to look at this Lua functions and classes and then in there we actually want to check the scanning section address section and memory section to find what we're wanting to look for say like the AOB here in the scanning section um, and this is not it, it is different than the um, auto assembler version but at the same time it's not really that different um, main thing is it does give us the option to give it some protection flags and alignment um, whereas the uh, auto assembler one just kind of searches everything right off the bat um, but then this one will actually search for all addresses and return a list instead of just finding the first one and stopping um, so if you ever have a scenario where you you have tried to refine your AOB as much as possible it's already a little bit too long um, and you can't get it down to any more than say three addresses but the second one is the one you need. This is where Lua can kind of come in to help with that. Um, whereas the auto assembler one, there really isn't a way around that. Um, I'm sure a clever person might be able to come up with something for that, but without really modifying something that you don't want to modify, I don't really see a way. Um, so we'll be making use of this Lua AOB scan and then we'll also be making use of this read integer um, this one it's not showing up here and even on the cheat engine um, lua.txt file uh, I wasn't seeing it in there but uh, it should have a, a second parameter for return it, you know read as a signed integer and we'll want to do that um, and the next thing we're going to be using is get address safe basically we'll just be using that to check our registered symbol to see if it already exists so we can get rid of it um, and that's because uh, the Lua register symbol will throw an error if it's already registered um, but the main difference with this one versus the auto assembler version of this is that we actually have to specify the address we can't just place you know give it a symbol name or a label name and register you know put that label somewhere we have to actually tell it what address that label belongs at um, in this case we're not really creating a label just a symbol um, and of course a symbol is more or less just uh, another name and alias for this address and if we actually look in the cheat engine directory where the exe, where the exe sits um, there's the Lua the cheat engine lua.txt file um, basically with this one um, it you know it's it'll always be the most up to date um, it's not a hundred percent because like I'm not seeing the second parameter for for any of the read ins uh, but at the same time you can use uh, control find to find whatever you're looking for and stuff of that nature and it does pretty much have everything plus some of what the wiki has so if you ever are looking at the wiki and it's not you know the page isn't made or something like that you can come back and check here or just uh, I know a lot of people just prefer just to check this file and not even look at the wiki it's really whatever version you prefer um, doesn't really matter so back in Cheat Engine now, what we want to do is just start off with finding our value. Um, I've relaunched here, so let me get reattached. Um, so value simple enough to find in this step. We'll go ahead and want to see what access is it. So now we can pretty much start wherever we want um, and just uh, what we want to do is just actually grab this address here it looks 
like we're our other instructions are down here so basically one thing we can look at and see here is with this um, we can see how it's showing up the same here or cheat engine is showing it as the same and with that um, it's I mean basically what we're seeing is it's the same address here and here but there is one key difference and that is that we're actually we've got completely different bytes here if we look in all three spots we can get that up there too um, in all three spots it's it's different bytes um, but the reason why it's still pointing at the same address ultimately here is because one thing that has to happen in 64-bit uh, is it'll read these four bytes It'll, or well, yeah, read these four bytes as a or as a signed integer, and then when it's done reading those four bytes, and it's actually at this instruction, it then takes that address, and then adds that to that number, and then that will be our 64-bit address. So we're going to have to do the same in our Lua to be able to get the proper address. Um, of course, you can still always just actually copy this. And then just grab this uh, module on offset format. Some issues there, and that'll and that's you know that that is a working base pointer. Um, but there are some scenarios where you're not really if you were writing your own trainer in C plus plus or something, um, you may need to do it differently. If you're not going to be looking up symbols and dealing with all that and you just want to be able to hook it and know where your exe is starting and kind of work from there um, but this way we can kind of just go through the steps and understand what's actually going on in this and then have other you know options available to us whenever we're doing this kind of cheat in a 64-bit thing um, really isn't too complicated basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the AOB get to this point in our instruction and then we'll want to basically just add three to that and go to these four bytes read that as an uns or as a signed integer and then add four to our AOB or yeah add seven so three plus four to get to this instruction and then just take that address that AOB address plus seven and that'll be our instruction address we'll call it and we'll call this our instruction offset um, so now looking we'll want to start a script for this um, we'll want the cheat agent framework so let's go ahead and actually do the auto assembler and just have the template give that to us um, I'm not even going to leave that open for the moment So we're going to want to start with um, basically a command here to tell it that we're going to be working in Lua. Um, and that'll actually change the mode so that way like up here we're in ASM mode and not Lua. But down here we are in fact in Lua mode. Same thing here and here actually. Basically all the way down. Um, if we wanted to go back to ASM at some point, we could do basically the same thing, but just ASM, and that'll switch it back to ASM mode. Um, but we're really not going to, we're going to do the whole thing in Lua. So one thing we want to go ahead and start with um, is stop our syntax check from executing everything. We can put some stuff up above this, but most everything, especially from the AOB scan down, we're going to want to put below syntax check. Um, you, so let's go ahead and get that in. If syntax check, then return. And um, basically, this is a one liner. And it just does if syntax check is true, then return end. Um, basically, it returns and won't finish completing anything else when it does a syntax check. Um, Cheat Engine gives you this flag or this uh, 
constant, more or less. I guess it's really not a constant in some extent, but in your script it will be. You won't ever want to set it. Um, makes access to that, so that way you can, like with that AOB scan, we don't necessarily, especially if we were injecting code with Lua, um, we don't necessarily want to do that when we open and close the uh, script window in Cheat Engine. We only want it to do it when we actually activate the, the address record that it sits within, or the memory record. Um, so we can go ahead and put some of our um, variables up here up top. And this could, we can use this method basically, so this way if we were to bury this all in a function, um, we won't have to do too much changing. We can just make our function actually you you know make use of these variables and set these. So the first one we're going to want is our AOB string. Let's actually do that right. Um, so that'll be our AOB string. We'll set that here in a little bit. Um, the next one we're going to want is our index. Basically, that AOB is going to the AOB scan will return a zero-based index um, string list. It works more like an array in Lua, but it does have some extra parameters or in functions to it, or some extra properties and functions to it. Um, one we'll be making use of is the um, count to check to see if we've actually got at least one. You can even set it up so it automatically throws an error. If there's more than one, uh, we're not going to do that. We'll actually keep it set up so that way you can supply an index and if it needs to be the second address of the you know found with the AOB scan we can go ahead and use that one again that would be one if we are wanting to use the second one because it's a zero based index but um, keep in mind the count and it tends to be this way in a lot of the cheat engine stuff um, the count will be a one based index so checking for one we'll see if it, the list has at least one address in it and then to access that one address the first one we need to give it an index of zero. Um, and then our next variable we're going to want is just going to be an offset, and we're going to call it our instruction offset. That one's just going to be pretty simple. It's just going to be three um, because in, uh, offsets are should be in hex. I always like to be a little more explicit. Make it three, you know, zero x three, but it really doesn't matter. It's whatever works for you. And then um, the next one we're going to want is another offset. It's our address or our instruction address. Um, it's not really the, the instructions address itself. It'll be the next line, but but it's the address we're going to need to create our base address. Um, this one is actually just going to be the instruction offset plus four. And then from here, we can kind of actually start our AOB setup. Um, so we'll want to make sure we're down here. Let's actually get this in the right section. We're going to want to make sure we're down here in the enable section because we don't want to run that AOB for a disable. We don't need to. Um, and of course, if we're injecting the AOB, it will fail. This is where you would want to register your symbol just like you do with the uh, auto assembler and then be able to uninject down in the disable section. So we're going to want another local variable. Call it result. And do AOB scan. And then we'll go ahead and do our AOB string. Um, again, we could put in our protection flags. Um, basically, that'd be in a string format. We do say plus W because we want it to be writable and then plus uh, I think it's X for executable and then say minus C for we don't want to scan copy on write again if it's not writable we can do you know negative W um, if we want to do both writable and non writable we can do a star like that same thing with any of them um, I believe or it was saying these, this is the same thing as, oh, let's not do that. Uh, so this is the same thing as if it 
we just gave it an empty string and I do believe it automatically starts off with search and everything. Uh, I might not be right on that. I'd have to take some testing to figure out. But, but for now we can just go ahead and go with this. This is a simple one. It's not really likely to break or have an issue with that. Um, so first thing that we're going to want to do is check if our result is empty uh, or nil. what we'll want to do is actually throw an error and let ourselves know that something's wrong, you know, we haven't found the AOV string. And that'll stop the execution, more or less. It'll, this will cause the, square, the, the, error, the script to error up. And then Chi Engine will automatically stop executing the, the script at this point and just, and, uh, like the box won't check and it won't, it'll just print this message up in the um, Lua engine and we'll, won't have to worry about our AOB messing up or any of that. Um, then we're going to want an else if. Result.count greater than or greater than or equal to one and so here's where we're going to actually start messing with our string list here um, we're going to want to make sure we do a couple things one is definitely destroy this destroy the string list when we're done with it um, we don't need it in memory once we get our address off of there so that's kind of the reason for that so from here we're going to want to go ahead and set Go ahead and say um, AOB address equals result. And this is where that zero base index comes in. Um, so then, once we get our result, we're going to want to go ahead and destroy our result list. And that'll clean that up and get rid of it for us. Um, then the next thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and uh, convert the AOB string because we're going to want to be able to add offsets to it. Uh, or not the AOB string, but the AOB address. I'm going to convert that to an actual Lua number so we can add our offsets to it and get to the right points we need. Um, Technically, we could even concatenate it as a string to some extent, but that, that's just a little weird to me. So let's just go ahead and convert it. Um, so we'll do AOB address equals to number. And AOB address. And then here, if this was um, a base 10 number stored in a string, uh, we could convert it back just like this. But since this is a, a hex number, or base 16, we actually need to tell it it's base 16. Um, and then this is just a string list, so it, it'll, it should always be a string. But um, I like to be explicit in a lot of cases. So let's go ahead and check for our type and make sure that it's a string. No, address. So if type AOB address is string, then we want to convert it. Or else we'd actually probably want to exit out of this and throw an error. Um, we'll pretend like it's a number if it's not a string. Um, again, it kind of always will be, so you really don't need this, but. So the next one we're gonna, or the next variable we're going to want to make and set is we're just going to call it just our offset. And for that we're going to want to read integer. And it'll be that AOB address plus our instruction address. Or no, our instruction offset, sorry. So plus our instruction offset. And that'll get us to 
these four bytes basically so we can read those or uh, uh, wherever we end up doing our AOB from and so we can just do it up here but so once we read those four bytes and we're going to want to read that as a signed integer so we're going to want to set this second parameter to true basically it by default is false or by default it is false um, and this way in case the uh, address was up above the instruction it can still find it correctly um, it looked like this one was going to be a positive no matter what so it doesn't really matter in this case but like I said we're going to want to we're going to set this up like we're going to bury it in a function and basically we'll do that later I think it's step 8 um, is what I plan on doing for that is we're going to put this in a function and then use this again but for this step we're just going to make it a simple script So, now that we've got our offset, we're going to want our address. And that one's not too complicated. That one, we just actually want the AOB address plus, yeah, plus our instruction address. And technically, this is an offset, not an actual address, because like we've got it set up here, it's, it's actually just two offsets added together, um, seven. And this one more or less will always, because it's always gonna be four bytes, it'll always be another four bytes plus so that, you know, that first offset we're using. Um, so now that we've got that, we're gonna actually wanna now create our actual base address that we're gonna be, wanna be working with. Um, so let's just actually call that base address. And then that's going to be our address plus our offset. And that's going to be the actual number we're looking for. Uh, so from here we're going to want to register our symbol. Um, the main thing we're going to want to keep in mind here is that Lua will throw an error at the symbol is already created. So let's use get address safe. All this does is it works just like get address, um, but the main difference is with that the extra bit there safe. What it'll do is if the um, or if the symbol doesn't exist, it won't throw an error. It will just return nil. Um, whereas if the symbol does exist, then it it'll actually return the address. We don't really want the address in this case, um, but we are going to want to feed it a string and give it the symbol that we plan on using. In this case, we're just going to use PTR step six. Let's go and throw in our end a statement. Um, so here, we're just going to want to register the symbol. Or no, here we're checking to see if it already exists. We're going to unregister if it, it does, and then right down here, this is where we'll register our symbol. So let's go ahead and unregister. Again, we're going to use that string with PTR step six. And we're going to register symbol. Um, the other thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and throw this down in our disable section. Um, this way, it'll, when we disable, it will unregister it correctly. And then here, just in case something does happen, we can still not throw an error and it'll just register the symbol. You're welcome to try it without this part. It may have been changed in a in an update. I it's, I just know at some point it was throwing an error for me, and I've just gotten in the habit of always adding this. Um, again, I like to be explicit in a lot of things, and you're not really required to do that. It's if you think it's too messy, don't do it. If it's not giving an error, then you don't really need it, and so on and so forth. But I kind of like doing a little more checking and stuff like that. Again, when we make this a function, we could actually add in some more checks up here to make sure our parameters are right and they're the right types and all that, but we're not going to worry about any of that. So at this point, this is basically our, the entirety of our script. The only thing we're missing is our AOB um, string. And we can go ahead and get that created real quick here. Um, so we select whatever first line we want and then shift and select to the line the instruction we want we can do control alt c or just go ahead and come down here and click on this 
and that'll copy the bytes. Um, so what we want to do is we know that this will this could very well change these four bytes that even we're reading from each load of the game. It could change if the um, if we run more programs before we open the tool before we open the tutorial. It might be shifted down further in memory or be less if we open up less programs. Um, I'm thinking if we actually close this out and relaunch it, we could actually watch and see that it, none of these addresses would change, even the instructions, and it would just, this would work for quite a while. And it wouldn't be until it got shifted around for whatever reason. Um, so let's go ahead and double check our AOB and make sure we're thinking right. We're going to get just a one address on it. So that's working. Um, another thing to talk about is so anything that's not a, a recognized hex character, um, Chudentrum will use as a, a wild card, and then there's different ways you can do it. Some people like the question marks. I actually, to me, those kind of hide, and I like to use X's, lowercase X's, but I also like to um, use a double X for the full byte. Basically, if you have a space on either side of it, I even actually believe that would actually work. Um, let's go ahead and test it just for the heck. No, D is a hex character. Basically, a lot of things can be wild card. It just depends upon how you feel about it. But again, I have my own way of doing things. So what I want to do is two, three. Yeah. <coughs> I actually like to pack it all in there. Um, you can do whatever format you like. Again, double check this and make sure I didn't mess it up or something. Count the wrong number of wild cards. Um, but this way I have an X for every nibble. Then two X's for every bite. And to me, it just, this sticks out a little bit better. I definitely like the asterisks better than question marks. If, if you know, that would be my recommendation. That way they kind of stand out real quickly and kind of jump at you as being something different. A question mark, it'll just be that it's narrower um, would be the main reason it sticks out to me, but um, the height here can also make it stick out a lot better. So, it, okay, getting a little ahead of myself here. Um, like I said before, the uh, Lua register symbol is a little different. We actually have to feed it that address, otherwise it won't register this at all. I don't even think it'll really throw an error or anything, so we'd have some issues here. Um, so make sure you add in your, not AOB address, we want the actual um, base address. Yeah, so there we go. So we want to register the symbol and we want it to be this base address. Um, so make sure you do make that change. Um, check it out. I think I've kept from screwing up anything else. Um, so that is one thing you kind of do always want to look over stuff and really think about what you're doing and make sure you're doing it correctly. Let's go ahead and click the right things here. Auto assemble and sign the cheat table. So now when we enable this, we can see where anywhere it's actually pulling, even though it's different bytes each and every time, um, wherever it sees that symbol, it is in fact loading up our pointer. At least I think it is. Looks like there's other instances. Um, not too worried about that. Let's go ahead and throw that on our, our registered symbol onto our address list here. Basically, it's got an offset of zero up here. We didn't. We don't need to offset this at all. Um, let's 
And that's kind of all there is to that. Uh, to actually complete this step, we could go ahead and create another part of this script and have it start a timer or launch a thread. Um, and then that way it could constantly check our, our pointer here and see if it's, you know, and then once it actually gets an address, then start cramming 5,000 in there. Um, we're not going to worry about that. We'll still make this one a little, a little more manual, but it's mostly just to keep the video link down. Um, so once we freeze that at 5,000, we should be able to go ahead and click change pointer and then get next popping up here. And that's what we've got going on. So um, that's kind of pretty much it for step six. Um, go ahead and control save. As you can see there, I actually do this regularly is create a backup one just in case I really screw up. I have a tendency to save a lot. Um, that can help you in the long run where you need to go back to an older script or something like that. And then again, I even like to make sure I version stuff out. I usually have a version folder inside each of my cheat table folders. Um, but that's just whatever you want to do. Man. Okay, so that's it for step six.